Hi, my name is Sarah Spicer and I work for Milton Keynes Council in the Environment and Waste team. In this video you will learn all about plastic, how it is made, what it is used for, the problems caused when plastic is not disposed of correctly, as well as things you can do to help. I'd like to introduce you to two men, Leo Hendrik Bakeland and Sten Gustav Tulin. Let's call them Leo and Sten. They are very important to the story of plastic. The first synthetic plastic was produced in 1907 by Leo, a Belgian chemist. He created a product known as Bakelite, which was used in all sorts of products such as typewriters, telephones and radios. Bakelite could be shaped or moulded into almost anything. It was marketed as a material of a thousand uses and it helped to replace everyday items made from wood, paper, glass, whalebone, elephant tusk and tortoise shell. Sten was responsible for the creation of the plastic bag in 1959. He was concerned about the amount of trees being cut down to make paper bags. He invented plastic bags as a product to help the environment. His vision was as a reusable bag, not a single-use item as we use it today. Leo and Sten would be horrified to know that their inventions would end up polluting our world. World War II led to the acceleration of the development and production of thousands of new plastic products. This was the beginning of the global plastics industry. Since then, rapidly increasing production of disposable plastic products now overwhelms the world's ability to deal with them. Many products have a lifespan of just a few minutes or hours, but can take hundreds of years to decompose. Plastic pollution has become one of the most pressing environmental issues today. So, do you know where we get plastic from? What's it made of? Plastic is made from crude oil, which is found deep underground, and is made over millions of years. Oil is extracted using deep-sea oil rigs and on-land machinery called oil derricks. It's then sent to petrochemical plants and refineries where it's processed. Chemicals are added to create different types of plastic, which have different properties. So what are the different properties of plastic? Plastics are used because of their unique combination of benefits. Plastic is chemically stable, which makes it the ideal packaging for food, drinks and medicines. The contents won't get spoiled. You can create all sorts of product designs as it can be easily moulded and printed on. Plastic can be made hard or soft, colourful or see-through. Plastic is a safe product. Unlike glass, it does not break into dangerous shards if dropped. It's also waterproof and does not rust. Plastic is hard-wearing, strong and difficult to break. It's also a very cheap product to make and to transport as it's so light compared to other materials. All these properties are what makes plastic so useful and adaptable. Plastic is around us in our lives and in everything we do. There is plastic in all our electronics. It's in our laptops, our gaming equipment, our mobile phones, even our fridges and other kitchen equipment. Plastics are in the casing and insulating the wiring inside. Plastic helps to keep us fit and healthy. Sports equipment such as helmets, rackets, shoes, balls, nets and more are all made of or contain plastic. Plastic is also in everyday items such as glasses and hearing aids and medical products such as syringes, hospital MRI scanners and baby incubators. Did you know there is also plastic in your clothes? This includes polyester, microfiber, acrylic, nylon and others. Look around the room. What else is made from plastic? Single-use plastics are often held up as the main problem. This is plastic that only gets used once before it's thrown away. It's often used to package food and drink products. But often the word unnecessary is often forgotten when talking about single-use plastic. Some of it is very useful. Plastic helps to keep food fresher for long. Food that has gone bad and is no longer usable has a much higher impact on the environment. The problem is not with the plastic material itself, but how we use it and what we do with it when we no longer want it. We have all seen images on TV and social media of plastic pollution in the oceans. The sun, wind and wave action break down the plastic waste into smaller and smaller particles. Some plastic bits become really tiny, less than five millimetres across. These are called microplastics. They are everywhere. You may have also seen how plastic can harm sea life. Turtles eat plastic bags thinking they are jellyfish. The bags block their intestines and increase their buoyancy so they can't dive. Seabirds eat colourful plastic bits thinking they are fish, but they can't digest the plastic and it fills their stomachs. 
This means they don't feel hungry and forget to eat. Sea life can also get tangled up in plastic, which can reduce their ability to swim or injure them. Microplastics have even been found in fish, shrimp, oysters and mussels. So how does plastic get in the world's seas and oceans? Unfortunately, there are many countries in the world that do not have organised waste management systems in place, so there are no bins and no lorries collecting the rubbish. 80% of the litter found in the world's ocean comes from land. Everyday household items such as plastic bags, wrappers, food containers, bottles and cans are thrown into local streams and rivers where the rubbish is carried to sea. Once caught up in the ocean currents, the rubbish can be transported all around the world. So how does rubbish from Milton Keynes get into the ocean? Unfortunately, some people in Milton Keynes drop rubbish on the ground. This is known as littering. The rubbish can then be blown into local waterways, or rivers and streams, which then travel on into the sea. Litter can also make where we live look messy and can also block up drains, causing localised flooding. Did you know you can be fined £125 if you're caught dropping litter? Milton Keynes Council spends over £3.5 million a year keeping our streets clean. Rubbish carelessly thrown away can also harm our local wildlife. Animals and birds can cut themselves on broken glass, get stuck inside cans, get tangled up or mistakenly eat plastic. The animal charity, the Royal Society for the Prevention of Animal Cruelty, receives around 5,000 calls a year about wildlife injured by litter. So what can we do to help? First things first, don't drop litter. Put your rubbish in the bin. When you're out and about, look out for the rubbish bins in your area. If you can't find one, take your rubbish home. Maybe you could also help with a litter pick. Did you know you can recycle your plastic bottles? Remember to wash, squash and put the lid back on if you can. If the lid goes in separate, that's fine. You can also recycle plastic tubs such as fruit containers and yoghurt pots. Place them all in the clear sack along with paper, cardboard and metal cans to be sent off to be recycled and made into new things. Plastic bottles are chipped down, melted and moulded into brand new bottles or can be made into other products such as traffic cones, wheeled bins, carpet, football t-shirts. Plastic tubs are melted and moulded together to create a plastic board to make things like picnic tables. Many soft plastics such as carrier bags, crisp packets, bread bags and plastic wrap can now be recycled at your local supermarket. So let's stop using unnecessary single-use plastic and avoid using disposable bags and water bottles when we can. Find useful everyday swaps such as reusable water bottles and reusable mugs for hot drinks. If you're having a packed lunch, swap to a reusable tub instead of using cling film, tin foil or sandwich bags. And when we do use plastic, make sure you dispose of it correctly. Help with recycling plastic bottles and tubs at home and school. Always put your litter in the bin. And maybe help with a local litter pick. So let's make Leo and Sten proud. What will you do differently?